Hey, Bankless Nation, we've got a special episode for you today. Not just an episode, another series. episode in a series called The Road to Permissionless. Permissionless is going to be a conference, is a conference that is happening May 17th through 19th. We're hyping some of the companies and projects that are coming to Permissionless in hopes that you get as excited about the conference as we are. This is going to be the biggest DeFi conference yet. David, there's some speakers at Permissionless as well. Who's going to be speaking at the event? Oh gosh, so many and, and so many that we haven't totally finalized yet. But the people that we have, Chris Dixon from the Mental Models of Web3 episode that everyone knows and loves, as well as Justin Drake, the pioneer of ultrasound money, Cooper Turley, the crypto NFT Web3 socialite, Jai from, uh, Jay from Rari, Stani from Ave, Vance Spencer from Framework, Jiho from Axie, and of course, the beloved Carly Riley from Overpriced JPEGs, just to name a few. And those are the ones that we have announced, not the ones that we haven't. Uh, so Ryan, there's going to be a ton of fantastic talks and, and sponsors and just boosts there. And one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why people go to conferences is not just to get the alpha and the information from the talks, but to make the connections from the people at the booths, the companies there, the, f- the people there, and make some friends along the way. So it's just uh, depending on what you are looking for, conferences generally have something for you. Whether you just want to make some friends or you're looking for a career or you just want to vibe and go to the parties, uh, Perm- Permissionless <laughs> is going to have it all. Uh, so that is why you should go to the Permissionless Conference coming in May 17th in Florida. And here is one project that's going to be here, uh, One Inch. This is the the largest by liquidity DEX aggregator out there. They started at a conference themselves. We have the, the co-founder of One Inch on an episode today, Sergey Kuntz. We're going to get to that discussion in just a minute. David, they also, uh, at, at Permissionless, they, they uh, let you and I plan some of the content. So mm-hmm. we're, we're going to have three tracks for you guys. Um, there's going to be a Metaverse track. It's going to be awesome. There's going to be a DeFi track, and there, there's going to be an institution regulatory type track. So it's basically all of the content that you've come to appreciate and uh, like on Bankless. We're <laughs> trying to condense a lot of that into one conference. So we jam-packed you across all of those, all of those lanes. So it's going to be really cool. Also, if you are a Bankless Premium member, did you know you get 30% off a conference ticket? I hope you've already got your ticket. But if you don't, there's still time. And the best way to get that is to upgrade yourself to Bankless Premium Membership, get a 30% discount. You'll see a link to that discount in the show notes. David, anything else we should say? Yeah, if you go and look at the, uh, which it's not it's not totally published yet, but if you go look at the agenda for the content, it's basically just like three days straight of Bankless Live. <laughs> <laughs> Bankless Live as a live podcast for three days. So yeah. if you know you guys are all listeners to Bankless, so you, we know that you're going to enjoy the content and the talks there at the conference. Absolutely. So guys, we are going to get right to our conversation with Sergey Kuns, who is the co-founder of One Inch. We hope you're hyped. Bankless Nation, we are super excited to introduce you to a guest on the Road to Permissionless series. This is Sergey Kuns. He's the co-founder of One Inch, which is a fantastic decentralized exchange aggregator use it all the time sergey welcome to bankless how are you doing hi hi everyone it's a pleasure to stay here yeah i'm fine thanks we are very uh very excited to uh, see you guys at permissionless and um but maybe before we talk a little bit about what you're doing from a product perspective what you're going to be doing at uh, at the conference uh can you give folks who haven't heard or used one inch the summary what is one inch so uh, one inch is uh, one stop access for for DeFi, we call it, uh, because we have almost every liquidity source integrated in one inch. So just imagine if you are going to buy an airplane ticket, you are not going to Emirates to to Lufthansa or to uh, like uh, Alaska Airlines. You are going to an aggregator, right? To 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 get the best best rate. Sometimes you, if you have connections between the flights. New York, Frankfurt, Dubai, and, and so on. You need really the best best uh, airplane ticket uh, also in the right time. And, and this is what we are doing for DeFi. If you are swapping one token to another token, we generate the path, the route, uh, like on Google Maps, but more, more in complex, uh, to exchange one asset to another asset in fully non-custodian manner. 
uh, in real P2P manner. So you're interacting directly with the smart contract without trusting us uh, by, by, by using our uh, protocols, which are multiple times audited and verified by the community as well and uh, a lot of security um, uh, experts. Uh, one inch network itself uh, started with one inch aggregation. We, we, we uh, built it on a hackathon over two nights in ETH New York. Uh, it was May 2019. Um, we didn't sleep at all over two nights. Uh, it was really hard, really hard. At, at the end, uh, the room behind me started to change somehow. And But I, I was able to finalize the, the, the prototype together with Anton Bukov, my co-founder. And um, some of uh, of the guys whom I showed this uh, product, uh, they said this is the next big thing, and this is really the next big thing for, for the DeFi. It, it, like, uh, it, it makes no sense to exchange direct on indexes. Uh, it makes only sense to use aggregators to get the best best result. And one each network is nowadays more than just an aggregation protocol. Uh, there's a kind of order book limit order protocol, uh, fully permissionless manner. Um, and um, there's a liquidity protocol. Multiple teams are uh, already joined to to our uh, kind of network. We have like 100 contributors around the globe. We have independent teams building, additionally to under kind of one inch umbrella, uh, like for example, decentralized file storage protocol DNAT. You have maybe seen them. Um, and everyone is uh, is welcome to join. There's a grant program. We know how hot it is at the beginning. We were like working one half years with Anton and without any any penny from from like from these products. Uh, just in the nights, normal jobs day, days over, and we know how it is to 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 have a need for for like money to build on something what what is really amazing, and uh, that's why everyone can join and uh, apply for for a grant uh, one inch network. When I uh, when I describe one inch to folks, I, I usually say something like, "Look, it's just it's Expedia for DeFi, right? For trading, <laughs> it, it's generally just what a it is." Short and, version, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and for, for folks, like uh, the great thing about this is, if you want to actually understand everything that Sergey was 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 saying in more detail, just use it. Just go to one inch and actually use the exchange. You know, you, you can plug in MetaMask, whatever uh, non custodial wallet you have. And uh, and try it out. I think sometimes in DeFi, that's the best way to to learn is actually try it. It's it's very easy to use. Um, why do you think One Inch has been able to attract so much market share, Sergey? What's been the key to uh, to your success here, and how much market share do you guys have now? So uh, we actually invented the aggregation in DeFi. Yeah, among multiple liquidity sources and one single transaction, fully atomically. Uh, that's why we uh, we have uh, uh, the the biggest part of the uh, of the uh, market share uh, on the market. Uh, right now, there are some other guys who just started to follow us, like Xerox, for example. Um, so they they actually built order book limit order protocol, um, and uh, they came to to the idea: oh, one inch solved really a huge problem in DeFi. They, like we combined all liquidity sources in a single one yeah, by using algorithms, and um, uh, Zero X started to do that. Pairswap uh, also joined us. Uh, the competition and we, we as like we are hackers, like hackers as builders on hackathons and yeah, the competitions, and we love competition and uh, we compete very well. Uh, if you look on the uh, MetaMask, MetaMask is using us, Zero X, Pairswap, and some other um, uh, uh, liquid sources, and we have most of the uh, uh, market share there. Uh, because we, we compete much better because we have more liquid source integrated and we have highly highly optimized advanced algorithm which responds under 100 milliseconds. This was a really really huge achievement of my of, of our team in the last last month. Um, about the market share, the thing is, if you compare us directly with Uniswap, uh, users who who are using Uniswap directly on the on the on the UI on the website of Uniswap, and us, we are on the same level. So. We, we need a little bit time so to 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 jump and uh, be really the the the, the most uh, the, the the best uh, uh, DeFi application in the world. Um, and compared to other aggregators, um, we we have uh, I I don't have right numbers right now, but uh, we have more than zero X and and Periswap together. So if you come them together, we are we have more than um, yeah. 
just the current state. And yeah, we, we just we just solved a huge problem. And this is the the key uh, point of uh, like of success: solve a problem, and don't try to to teach people that you are right, or you or or they have to use something of what you have built. Just show him uh, what what you solved as a problem and they will agree on that because you solved the problem. So you have to, people who agree on what you have built and this is the success of, uh, of, of Punish, I would say. So guy, I remember uh, East New York 2019 where you guys put the first versions of, of uh, One Inch together. I remember being being at that conference and I think that's an interesting lesson for, for listeners where some people think that conferences are a bunch of just fun games and parties, and it can be, uh, but you can also make a ton of progress and, and get a lot of done at conferences, especially hackathons like, like East New York. So it's definitely one of the things we're interested in, in seeing at permissionless. And I'm a little, I'm curious with regards to the user base or the use cases of one inch, obviously the use case of one inch is to get the best liquidity and the best rates on your trade. But when it comes to actually who is using the product, what do you see happening the most? Like what is the most frequent customer of, of one inch who's using your product to, to achieve what goals? So we have really great uh, distribution among uh, different um, uh, trade sizes, I would say. Um, we have more than 1 million people already using one inch uh, just on Ethereum. It's like half a million on Binance Smart Chain and uh, 600,000 Polygon. Um, so we have this dashboard, so public dashboard and Dune Analytics. Everyone can take a look on that. At the bottom of the analytics, uh, you can find the distribution. Uh, this uh, chart, you can see how is the distribution between small amounts, people who trade small amounts, people who trade uh, bigger amounts. So we have a uh, really great distribution. There are some who trade a lot, yeah? Some who trade really small amount, but like in the middle is, uh, the, the graphic looks like this. Um, in the middle, so they swap like two, three, ten thousand um, dollars uh, is most of uh, our users uh, who are doing that, um, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm curious, as we go into the world of layer two, does, uh, does one inch have a layer two strategy? What's the, what's the, uh, what's the plan for reducing gas fees and, and making sure that one inch can be accessible by everyone? So um, we have the one inch foundation uh, on Cayman Islands. This is fully independent uh, organization uh, from us. They uh, still uh, have some one-inch tokens and they have a program for gas refund. So if you stake specific amount of tokens, uh, already from, I guess, 1,000 tokens, uh, you get a discount from 25% of gas costs uh, every month as a kind of uh, withdrawal. Yeah? And uh, if you have 100,000 100, of one-inch tokens staked, so you, you get full, full amount uh, as a refund in one-inch tokens every month uh, for what you're swapping. So this is like a small mitigation uh, to, to solve this problem with higher gas costs. Right now, this is not a future problem. Uh, you can see the market dropped a lot and the gas costs are also low right now. Uh, but layer two is a good solution. So we, have, we, we were talking with Vitalik as well in, in the last conferences, and he also agreed on that, that layer two is a good solution for DeFi. Sharded architecture, Ethereum 2.0, it's something for other things, not for fi decentralized finance. Because in decentralized finance, you need to execute atomically. In our case, um, we, we execute like in one single transaction, multiple swaps and multiple exchanges, multiple markets in between. And um, um, and uh, this is this is the benefit. And layer two offers uh, low gas costs, uh, high security, um, and uh, we have already optimism integrated. Arbitrum we have integrated, and the big big player is coming very soon. I was talking. It's a small insight. I was talking with uh, with Alex from from Zika Sync uh, in the last days and. They are, they are working really hard to release ZK Sync in the mainnet. Uh, it's already in a testnet. You have seen it maybe. And uh, the thing is, the difference between ZK Sync and Optimism and Arbitrum is that uh, everything is already proven on ZK Sync. So it's not optimistic roll-up. So it, maybe everyone manipulated something and you have seven days on withdrawal to, to claim. Yeah. But in ZK Sync, it, it won't work. Yeah. It's, everything is proven. It's very fast. It's uh, scalable. 
um, it can be scaled up to 25,000 transactions, TPS, yeah? And this is huge. This is, it, it, it offers um, also to deploy like uh, applications for banks as well. So banks are, we are talking a lot of banks uh, around the world. And they're they are looking in, in, in DeFi and, uh, and I, I guess they will also deploy a lot of things uh, and uh, will play with all the protocols in permission manner. For sure, we need to introduce KYC for this part. This, this is a different story. Uh, but also the low gas costs on layer two, it's, it's a great thing. And high, high, high security uh, is also very important in these terms, yeah. Sergey, so I, I'm I'm just curious when we think about uh, scalability in general, like how how do you think this uh, how do you think this shakes out, right? So you, you one inch is very much as an aggregator, very much a liquidity aggregator, and in the early days that just meant liquidity on one chain, Ethereum, across different DeFi protocols. Now increasingly it means liquidity uh, across multiple chains, many chains, and many many different layer twos and rollups as well. Uh, and you were talking about some challenges with uh, atomic transactions, right? The lack of composability between various, you know, L2s. Does one inch serve as an aggregator for that sort of thing too? Like, how do you think this this shakes out in the in the three to five year time horizon? Is there still one user interface where a user can kind of get liquidity from anywhere, whether it's a, a side chain, a main chain, a, you know, a layer two, or do you think that DeFi, the future of DeFi, is uh, a bit more fragmented? So, yeah, we have seen the liquidity move to Polygon, to Binance Smart Chain, and so on. And right now, it makes no sense to offer swaps among multiple chains because they are not atomic. Yeah, and this is a huge problem. So you you have a risk that uh, the rate can change on the other chain and uh, you need to mitigate this risk. Uh, for sure, if you have a kind of a good bridge protocol, which can mitigate this and you exchange on the Ethereum side uh, to, to this liquidity pool tokens of, of this bridge and they are just unlocked on the other side, but it's still there some risks and um, it's it's not it's not that easy to, to to implement, and there's not enough liquidity right now um, for for bridges. I would say uh, one thing what you can do is potentially easy already. We, we are thinking about this feature as well, swapping on Ethereum and moving it to Poly, Polygon, for example, in one single transaction. It it would potentially work. Um, we are looking in this direction as well, but we, I don't think so that we will aggregate this among multiple chains in the future. What what looks like uh, layer two, which is uh, which is uh, highly secure, yeah, and uh, scalable, which get the most traction, yeah, um, and it makes no sense to to like distribute liquidity among multiple chains uh, chains where you have maybe higher fees, yeah, than in the one single L two, where you have a lot of protocols deployed already. And uh, maybe like, for example, Polygon had an outage like of like one day or something. Like they didn't work like one one day. And this is insane for the blockchain, you know, like potentially you have bank applications later working on this and um, and everything stopped because like of one bug. And this is really stupid, yeah. Um, I guess we, we, we had never such a situation in Ethereum. That's why Ethereum has the most, uh, most most liquidity for sure. We had some forks and so on because of these stories with the hackers. Uh, I don't think so that it will uh, happen again uh, because the community is much bigger than before. That's interesting. So you think there's going to be a power law winner for in the in the L2 wars? Uh, we'll have to see how that uh, that that um, moves forward. But but tell us a little bit about um, the road to permissionless. So we have three months until the permissionless conference. You know, really excited about that at, at the time of recording. Anyway, do you guys have any big new releases between now and then, or just in the upcoming future? Uh, future, what's one inch? Because I know you guys are always building things. What's uh, on the near term release roadmap? So we we have like 100 people uh, around the half, like 50 people are working on like software things, like developing. Uh, we have multiple fields. We have our wallet, uh, iOS wallet. We are going to introduce NFT support in the next days. Uh, if you have the luck that Apple approved that. NFT um, support? Yeah, yeah. It's a really great feature. It's already, I'm testing it already like a month uh, 
so I was showing it on the ETH Denver a little bit to some people. Um, and uh, it, it's a need, you know, like in a wallet, in one inch wallet, you need NFT support uh, for sure. In aggregation itself, we, we, we don't have yet the solution. We, we are looking also in this direction, but it's not on a high priority. Actually, you need the aggregator for, for, for the NFTs because you, if you have a new, like, like TikTok, you know, like, uh, if you have uh, uh, like an NFT which is uh, like high rated, then you should maybe buy it, yeah, and later sell it for high money, whatever. Not financial advice. Um, so uh, we are going to introduce uh, Android Wallet. Yeah, it's almost done. There's an extra team waiting for the security audit results. It's also important in, in our case. We do every time when we release something, security audits. Um, uh, we um, are working on a new protocol. We are one inch token is used uh, highly as utility. You need to stake and insure. Okay, this kind of insurance, uh, we call it. Uh, you stake one inch token to insure specific part of the protocol. Um, I, I cannot disclose a lot of things uh, regarding this, but this is also a game changer. We introduce uh, permissionless manner in a specific DeFi field, which is not yet solved. By, by anyone so uh yeah these are things what are coming uh in the, in the next three months and uh we have more in planning so derivatives aggregation this direction it's it's a lot of work right now and derivatives is also options and it's this uh, also a huge topic for DeFi uh, from our point of view so okay, that's all very exciting. I'm excited to see the things that, that come out of One Inch in the next uh, three months. And I'm assuming listeners are going to have a bunch of questions when they see these products roll out. So who uh, from the One Inch team is going to permissionless? So if people have questions about these releases, who can they go ask? We have a great community team. Um, uh, they are also based uh, in, in US. Uh, mm -hmm. And... Uh, um, Matt, for example, um, he's traveling uh, between the conferences. He did. He's right now uh, in Tanner, for example. Uh, they are they are right now in Rio, yeah. Uh, and uh, you, yeah, join, yeah, come to our booth, and uh, we have sometimes uh, kind of some gifts, uh, so chips, so like poker, like poker chips, uh, with some uh, uh, one inch tokens on it. Yeah, so you can participate directly in the in the DAO as a, yeah as a contributor kind of uh, DAO contributor, and um, there are also some other people who are traveling. Um, this also Nick, for example, uh, he is uh, more in the field of uh, business operations. Gleb, uh, he is more with with uh, working with influencers uh, and and uh, some other um, like uh, uh, social media guys. Um, also, we have Natalia. Also, she is also working very closely with the uh, with, with the community, and yeah, just come to our booth, get get a nice T-shirt, uh, maybe a hoodie, and also some one inch tokens to to participate in the DAO. We have a really great DAO. Um, we have a DAO treasury with uh, already seven millions of dollars collected from the revenue streams from the protocols itself. Um, just yeah, to to which should be spent for grants. Yeah for example but yeah everyone's welcome to participate so who at permissionless are you looking to meet what kind of talent are you looking to have uh, onboarded into the dow what, what kind of talent are you looking to help build out the one inch ecosystem so if, if people are coming up to your booth uh what talent what what uh, skills should they bring if they're interested in contributing so we have a lot of uh, fields where we're working right now like however it said one other people uh, a lot of teams. Uh, we have teams for 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 the UI, for the Web three UI. We have teams for Android who who can like write Java code. You're welcome. Um, iOS uh, people, uh, algorithm guys for sure. We are looking for more people to improve the algorithm, also to extend it maybe later for stock exchanges or centralized exchanges as well, um, uh, and maybe combine it all all together with DeFi. Um, also, um, people who are like, would, would love to work with the community itself. We need more people who push it, push it, push this DeFi topic around the globe. It, yeah. And, uh, for sure we, we are looking for business relations as well. So if you have maybe a startup and you would like to integrate one inch or you would like to be being integrated in one inch or you just want, I don't know, um, 
one kind of collaboration, uh, you're welcome yeah, to, to come and to talk with us. So, Sergey, the permission of this conference, I think, is going to be a mix between like industry veterans, industry OGs, uh, but then also a bunch of new people. A lot of uh, people's first conference, I suspect, is going to be permissionless. Do you have any advice for, for people that have never been to a crypto conference before? Because uh, crypto conferences are kind of a, a beast of their own. Um, and, and do you have any like advice or rules of thumb or, or just um, bits of information that perhaps the first conference goer might, uh, might find useful? My suggestion is just, uh, just do it. Come to the conference. <laughs> uh, so my first, the, the thing is, uh, when uh, I was like touring also around the globe before 2018, uh, was an AWS conference, for example, and some some other conferences uh, around the globe, and I didn't had the feeling uh, this is like cool, really cool, yeah, and it's like. There are a lot of cool, nice people which I can just meet, yeah, and talk with them directly. In crypto conferences, crypto hackathons, you can talk with anyone, yeah. Just go to someone and ask, ask what they are doing. And this, uh, most of the people are really, um, or all people which I met, they are just explaining what they are building. They are maybe traders, uh, maybe they are building on startup. They have just an idea to build something and looking for a new, for another co-founder, yeah. So. I, I like this this um, feeling on on the crypto conference that every fun, everyone uh, uh, loves to talk with a, anyone else, and this this is great. Sergey, do you have a a you've talked about some of the products that are rolling out in the next three months before permissionless happens? But I want to zoom all the way out and just kind of ask about the one inch ecosystem in like the three to five year time horizon. What is the super zoomed out vision for the one inch ecosystem? So we will see uh, KYC introduced in, in DeFi. So we will have a permission uh, DeFi and this is not bad. Um, regulators are looking how to regulate and uh, banks are looking to join, but banks need to kind of regulation. Yeah. So for, for this, we will see a kind of KYC certificates, I call it. Um, potentially on ZK knowledge proof technology. It's a really good one technology which can be used with smart contracts uh, highly efficiently. Um, so we will we will see um, uh, under one inch uh, a lot of different products, uh, uh, leverage, duties, whatever else is uh, is possible to build in permissionless manner. Uh, to just improve the uh, current uh, traditional financial system, and I. I would love to see also banks participating in this uh, and uh, institutions uh, who offer everyone to maybe stake some like 100 bucks in a protocol by using potentially also for, from our point of view also a bank. Why not? Bank is a gatekeeper for, for me. Uh, it's not a comp kind of, it's not uh, someone we, we have to fight with. They are, we, we need to work with them and use them as gatekeeper. So they, they will open the doors for everyone to stake on a specific protocol without having huge knowledge in DeFi space. And they trust the bank and it's fine and the people can earn uh, uh, on, 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 on the savings. Right now, you don't get anything uh, in Europe at least. You get like negative interest rate and this is stupid, you know, like if I have 50,000 50, uh, euros uh, collected in my last uh, 10 years, I have to pay like 0.5% just negative in, uh, interest rate. This is stupid. I, I, can, I can, right now I can just buy USDC and uh, with this money and, and put in Uniswap, for example, in a specific price range where I can just generate 10% of the CPY. Um, and this is uh, nice, but not for everyone. Uh, and that's why I would love to see a lot of institutions, uh, also custodian services, working more with DeFi. And we will have for sure the leadership on the market because I have the best team in the world who are shipping like like beasts, like maniacs in, in good terms. Yeah, uh, working the nights and the days. Uh, how I do it with Anton still. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, Sergey, thank you so much for spending some time with us, and thank you for building One Inch. You guys, your team has uh, one of the shippiest teams in all of crypto and all of DeFi, you guys just keep pumping out the features. And I think that's why you've gained so much of the market share. Thank you for your insights. 
Uh, thank you for some of the advice today. And we're looking forward to seeing the One Inch team at the Permissionless Conference. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to, to participate here. Of course, guys, none of this has been financial advice, but I got to say, this is kind of career advice. You got to come to the Permissionless Conference. This is the space to be in crypto, Web3. We're changing the world. We could do that in person too. Attending conferences is important. David has taught me that. I'll be there in person as well. That's going <laughs> to happen May 17th through 19th in Palm Beach, Florida, the biggest DeFi conference yet. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Take care. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, head over to Bankless HQ right now to develop your crypto investing skills and learn how to free yourself from banks and gain your financial independence. We recommend joining our daily newsletter, podcast, and community as a Bankless Premium subscriber to get the most out of your Bankless experience. You'll get access to our market analysis, our alpha leaks, and exclusive content, and even the Bankless token for airdrops, raffles, and unlocks. If you're interested in crypto, the Bankless community is where you want to be. Click the link in the description to become a Bankless Premium subscriber today. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for in-depth interviews with industry leaders, Ask Me Anythings, and weekly roll-ups where we summarize the week in crypto and other fantastic content. Thanks everyone for watching and being on the journey as we build out the Bankless Nation.